So this next step, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay the songs out in the timeline where I want them to be. So um, I already have the order. It's gonna be you know this one one two and three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of just roughly just drag them where they're gonna be. We'll fine tune that a little bit later. I'm using R and T to zoom in and out. So let's go to the top of this one. Uh, find where it starts. I'm going to blow it up. Oh, stupid computer. Um, so let me solo this. So there's no weird intro or anything. It just starts with the guitar. Stop. just starts with the guitar. Um, so I'm going to just you know trim it there. Do a little tiny fade there. It's, it's important to not start like right exactly on a downbeat or a transient or something like that because some devices have a slight ramp up so it's good to have just a tiny fade not enough that you'd notice it but enough enough for that the electronics can catch up to it so um here's this one i can hit command a it's going to snap the uh vertical zooming back to its default state so i don't have to keep track of how many times i clicked blow up i can get back to normal by hitting uh, option a so now let's check the end <laughs> Slide this over a little bit. So there's no fade out or anything. That's just an abrupt end, which is solid. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing I did at the beginning. Just a teeny tiny fade. That's going to prevent any pops and clicks that could show up there with uh, non-zero crossings. So the next thing I do is, is uh, hear where the second song is going to start. So... Um, Let's just hear how it starts. So I'm going to trim the start of this first, the second song, uh, blow it up again. And then trim that here. Do a little fade. So it's going to start basically like this. So now I'm going to decide where exactly I hear it coming in after this next song. And I'm going to just hit the enter key to drop a marker into Pro Tools. It makes it easier to drag. So I just kind of uh, just go by how I feel. Um, right there. So I'm going to just ballpark drag this to where it starts at that marker. And uh, now hit play. When you have songs that sort of change speed, um, when it goes when it goes from really heavy to something that's a, a much more downbeat or mellower, uh, you don't want to have those like right next to each other as close timing wise. Uh, it sounds a little bit disjointed to do that, so it's nice to give the listeners a little bit of a pause in there, um, and that's what we're doing. So I'm going to trim the end of this third one or second one, I should say. So maybe I want a little longer fade so I kind of get some of that when the guitar fades into the noise. I don't want that to be as prominent, so I'll just do a little bit of fade to get that out. All right, that sounds good. Now let's check out that third song. So down here, and here it starts. Okay, so it has a, a synth patch, that synth pad that kind of ramps up into the song. Starts right about there. I'm going to make it a little more, you know, ease into a little more. And this is going to be the tricky part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap those two. So on my recording, on my master, there's going to be a slight overlap where the one guitar is fading out and this one sort of fades in. Mm -hmm. 
little tighter. Um, you want to have this uh, fade fade out just a little bit longer. Bring us in a little closer. Yeah, I like that a lot. So let me just trim the ending of that. Alright, so that goes on too long, so I'm just going to trim that and uh, do a big fade, maybe an S-curve fade on that, and hear how that sounds. Perfect, I'm going to hit save, and... Now, the next thing I'm going to do is place track ID numbers and then export the song. So I'll do that in the next video.